All right, so I assume everyone can see the Semantic WinCC Unified screen? Yes. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this started. Uh, my name is Justin Smith. I am the Wesco Automation Specialist for Indiana. Uh, my counterpart, Greg Bodis, is on the line out of Cincinnati. He is our Motion Specialist, uh, but he also does uh, the same thing that I do with PLCs, HMIs, and drives. Uh, my coworker, Paul Wheeler, is out of Kentucky. And Dave Henderson is our control specialist down in uh, Kentucky as well. He covers uh, all the states for the controls products. Today, we're going to cover WinCC Unified. WinCC Unified is the new uh, HMI platform that Siemens is uh, going to. Um, the, this is new product, new hardware, new software uh, that is trying to uh, bring the HMI and to bring those tools to the 21st century to allow them to grow uh, for all the future advancement that we're going to see here in the next couple of years. And as we know, technology is flying, uh, so we're trying to, to really be prepped uh, with, the, with the new products that we're going to be offering. Okay. Uh, HMI is changing, Human Machine Interface, in case you're wondering what HMI stands for. This is constantly changing. We are getting more and more data is being pulled out of machines, uh, machines that you didn't think you needed data. They are now um, being passed up to the cloud. Right here, the, this is a, a slide from last year, but they expect 25 billion IoT devices by 2021. That's a lot of toasters and microwaves and refrigerators, uh, right? And then hopefully some uh, really maybe some more useful tools like your machines that are now going to be on uh, an IoT device, right? And then we're also looking at some additional user uh, inter interaction. So uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, these are all things that are kind of in the pipeline. Uh, whether this turns into a full-on minority report type movie, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but right now that is kind of where things are just being built. A lot of things are going to be coming down the line, right? So we've got a lot to, to look at. You've got the scalability for a machine or, or a, a plant. You've got cloud connectivity. You've got uh, device independency. You know, they're talking about IT integration, right? Tying your OT with the IT and how do we do that uh, as painlessly as possible? All that is coming out and the HMI is going to be that really good tool to allow you to do those uh, kind of collaborations and connect. This is the new pieces of WinCC Unified. We're going to actually cover a lot of this here in the slides, um, but these are the kind of the four main talking points. So new technology that's coming with the panel. Uh, there's some scalability options that are that allow this to to really grow. Uh, we're going to talk about cloud connection as well as just integration. All right, so one engineering TI portal cover all its uses. So TIA, totally integrated automation, that is still applies to the WinCC Unified. So panel, PC, apps, AR, this is all still tied to that WinCC Unified program, which is inside of TIA portal. From there, we've got the platform, so you've got your panels, you've got your PC, uh, similar to what we have now. We have WinCC Comfort, we have WinCC Advanced for the PC. Now we're going to have Unified Comfort and Unified PC. Still programmed in the WinCC Unified software, which is embedded into that TIA portal, starting in V16, as well as more improvements in V17 that has recently come out. All right, so now that we have this one kind of common HMI platform, face plates, screen structure, uh, UI controls, this is going to be seamless between the panel and the PC. Uh, so that's that scalability we're going to talk about some more. Uh, but they are they are kind of joined together to allow that flexibility between screens. Right, I'm going to jump into WinCC Unified. This is just a highlight screen. We're actually going to go through all of these in the next slides, but this is just uh, some of the topics that we're going to go through uh, during this presentation. 
So we just talked about scalability, as you can kind of see here from a seven inch uh, comfort, sorry, seven inch unified comfort panel up to a 22 inch, the screens will size themselves, okay? Uh, if, if any of you have ever gone from an old HMI and then tried to put it on a larger one, you spend a lot of time trying to scale it and stretch and make sure everything kind of fits uh, with our new technology that is going to automatically scale uh, to fit the panel. Um, so you're not going to spend a lot of time with that. Plus the uh, controls will all kind of feel and look the same, uh, whether it's on a panel or a PC. New tools that are going to be coming to this new, this new panel. Once again, this is new hardware. We also get the new, uh, with the hardware, we also get the new software. We have the web technology, so HTML5, JavaScript, SVGs. We have the access to the HMI from a web browser, so a phone or a tablet. You can actually tie into your unified panel and it will run in a standard web browser. And that's built into the panel, as well as the uh, UI controls. This just kind of shows you, you can kind of make your own or you can use custom web controls on the HMI. A lot of built-in tools to these panels. Scripting, um, the addition of JavaScript allows for more collaboration with some of our IT folks. Uh, maybe not just your IT that are managing your network, but those that are writing uh, code or tying in additional um, you know, uh, platforms they are now going to be able to orient right into our panels with that JavaScript. There's already predefined code in there as well. There's an integrated bugging, debugging tool. Um, this is just going to be a little more of not just your typical engineer, but you're now kind of bringing into the computer side, the IT side to kind of gain some more of that kind of uh, connectivity between each other. TIA portal openness. Uh, TIA Portal Openness is a .NET program that allows you to, uh, you can actually build your own kind of configuration of either a TIA Portal project or uh, TIA Portal uh, devices. So if you had to configure a project with 100 VFDs in it for a large setup, you can actually write your own configuration. You can push that into TIA Portal and it would actually create those drives uh, have a predefined parameters and it would all be preloaded into the project. Um, a lot, a lot of power in TI portal openness. Um, there's a ton of information about that. So if you guys ever get that far and want to look at openness, um, you know, reach out to me or, or my colleagues and we'll, we'll get you some more information, but that is a really neat tool um, to kind of speed up some of that configuration processes. This is the techno technological hierarchy. So these are some additional plant assets, uh, more towards the kind of uh, soft SCADA, you know, or, or small small size SCADA systems. But what this allows you to do is you can actually write parameter types and reuse code in your HMI uh, for multiple uh, products. So you, you can see here, I have a motors type and I can use motor one, motor two, and that, has the structure of those tags already pre-created. So it allows you to kind of create it once and then drag and drop similar to a faceplate. But now we're doing with our tags. Uh, same thing for the hierar hierarchical structured. So this is gonna actually show you if you have a fault in valve one, it will then pass those faults uh, through up, up the system to kind of give you an idea to track uh, the status of the plan. Calendars and performance insights. So there is a uh, calendar built in. You have the option to do KPIs in the panel. Uh, you can do your scheduling. We'll kind of show that in the next one here. So if you actually wanted to schedule your production, you can actually put that into the panel and then use that information that runs on the machine to run a KPI and actually give you some performance uh, during your shifts. It's all built into the panel. Some people have a third party system for that. Some of that are still doing this longhand, but we now have this kind of built in. This is 
once again, talking about the KPI capabilities. Collaboration. So this is going to allow for connection between uh, third party systems uh, as well as other machines that are still using unified panels. So if you have two machines that are both using unified panels, you can actually pass data between the panels, uh, which allow you to then share the screens, tags, uh, our archives, alarms, and that's going to integrate, you know, machines that currently aren't connected can now have that connection and then be able to pass data uh, back and forth. All right, so we've all seen this. This is a typical uh, kind of business for production. You've got your sales, the office, logistics, production line. So this is going to allow you to use WinCC Unified to talk to other third-party tools. So your HMI can now connect up to the CRM that your customers are using or that you're using to uh, track customers and, and you know do your orders. You could tie this into the ERP system. You could tie it into the WMS for logistics of when things are going to be done in production to prep for the logistics of shipping. This is just allowing you to open up different ways to get data between the segments of the business. Once again, I don't want to use this as a magic pill, like we're going to just put one of these in here and everything talks. There is stuff that's obviously going to be have to integrate it. Like, how are you going to use those? Are you going to use uh, open open pipe data interface and ODK, uh, custom web control. These are add-ons that are kind of built in, or there's an add-on that you can load to the panel to allow you to make these connections. Like we just talked about, the integration of the platform. You've got the data, you've got runtime openness, or you can do custom web controls. All right, we're going to jump into the panels. So, just like before, we have kind of our top uh, tier highlights, and we're going to talk about these as we go through. Here are the sizes of our panels. Uh, starts at seven inch. I believe it's seven, ten, twelve, fifteen, nineteen, and twenty-two. These are a different uh, cutout of the standard comfort panel. So, right now, if you have a comfort panel and you wanted to go to unified. Uh, the mounting is different, so that would need to be modified. These come with standard silver frames with the Siemens brand. You can do a black frame with no branding. You have increased performance, so currently you can do up to 16 connections from an HMI. Right now, uh, for the comfort panels, it's just eight. You have tags up to 8,000 tags. And then you have up to 600 scripts that can be done in these new unified panels. Ready to use applications. There is a web browser. So you have Google Chrome, you have VLC player, you have Office, you have a PDF viewer built in. Um, these are kind of built in tools to the HMI, and we will cover those when we actually get to the HMI kind of screen, but these are kind of built in. Uh, and this is actually running on a Linux OS that is uh, made for Siemens to run the kind of the background of the, the operating system. And it's a lot better than what we've had in the past, uh, a lot more user friendly. All right, so you can actually add in apps and we'll kind of cover that here in just a second. So. All right, so uh, apps that can be added, you can add apps directly to the device or you could run them uh, managed centrally on a, uh, on a server. Things like uh, Node Red, that if you wanted to tie in other devices uh, to this, you could do MQTT is a, a common uh, IoT kind of protocol for communication that can be built into these panels. So I can have a uh, unified panel talking to a Siemens PLC over Profinet. 
uh, over Ethernet, you know, uh, to the PLC, as well as any other kind of uh, gateway devices that are talking MQTT over Node Red. This is going to be able to integrate some of those other third party devices, but still pull it all into one centralized screen. And like we were just talking about, so locally, you can install it on the device, or you can use the on premise, on cloud, or on MindSphere. And that just means on premise is going to be an actual box in, in the plant. You can connect up to a cloud, or you have the Siemens MindSphere cloud that you can use. Here's some of the apps that we have. So MQTT, like I said, that is built in for the common protocol. You have the Somatic Flow Creator, uh, which is kind of a Siemens uh, skinned node red um, that has predefined blocks in there, as well as a standard node red that you could use. Or you have the Notifier, so you could put that on your phone. It now also works for smart watches, to where if a machine is having an issue and it flags an alarm, you can get a notification on your phone or on your smartwatch, uh, and then use that to you know, reach out to an electrician or, or an engineer to go uh, take care of that problem. There is licensing that is required for the panel for some of the industrial edge uh, tools for those apps. You can do the demo or test and development that is free. If you're going to put this out in production with some of the node red and some of those add on apps, you do require a license. All right, like we were talking about, the MQTT is built into the panel. Uh, it lets you use that to uh, publish, and it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the industri industry Twitter, if you will. So uh, a device will tweet, and a bunch of people are following that device, and then they will get that tweet, and they'll read the data that kind of comes from it, and then they can kind of tweet back. Uh, that's kind of the best description that I can give, uh, but it is a uh, a great small protocol, uh, which means it doesn't take up any bandwidth. So for networks that are kind of having trouble or, or um, that are just loaded up, MQTT uh, is actually does, works really well on those kind of not, not as uh, well-performing networks. Once again, we can't talk about uh, Siemens without security. Right, so there are a lot of uh, hardware security as well as software security that can be put on these, and we'll kind of cover that when we look some more into the uh, HMI itself. Uh, but there are um, a bunch of security guidelines for these, and if you see at the very bottom, there is a SIOS uh, ID number, so the SIOS 109481300. That is a link to the Siemens support site, and you can get all the security guidelines for the HMIs on the site. All right, so this is a uh, AR uh, panel screen. So if you have a phone that has a QR code, you can actually scan this. Uh, it will load a, uh, a cabinet. It'll, you can kind of see it has that little blue virtual cabinet that will load on your uh, screen and it will have a comfort panel just kind of floating right in front of you. Uh, so if you want to scan that real quick, you can pull that up and look around and it will give you a augmented reality of what that panel would look like. Also record this, so if you want to watch it again, you can scan it later. All right, so template suite. We have heard this, and Siemens has had it, and we we know our outside sales guys have heard this as well. Um, some customers have canned screens that they are going to use. Others are going to kind of create them from scratch. And uh, we have all touched, I assume most of us has touched a bad HMI where some of the uh, screens are just not well done. And sometimes it's, it's very difficult to navigate uh, when you have to kind of fight the, uh, the way the screen is designed. Siemens is actually just giving away a template suite. So you can actually go on their support site and you can uh, select a template creator. The template suite is a little add-on script that you will run. 
you will kind of configure what you want your screen to look like by adding the number of screens, the top bar, um, all this is going to be built into the uh, the wizard. Kind of show that here. This is a, a a script that that runs, and you kind of run this executable. You can can you can design it whether it's going to be a panel or the PC, and it actually lets you kind of build that uh, wizard similar to what we had in the WinCC Comfort. Uh, but this is a add-on. It's not built into Portal. Uh, you will just run this script if you wanted to have your own template. Uh, but these screens, the way the, the, the design, it is free, it is customizable. So whatever you load from Siemens, if you wanted to change that, take away some buttons, shift things around, uh, once it's loaded, then you can start to customize however you, you want. But that availability is there from Siemens for free. Now we'll see a little video. If you want to take a picture of this on your phone, screenshot it or uh, reach out to us afterwards, we get you a link. But this is the entry ID 9117476767. This will take you to the uh, tool to download that HMI template suite. All right, additional examples. So you can add in, so there's add-ins for data, tag simulator, demo projects, the suite. So there's a unified demo project. If you guys have v16 or if you have v17 already installed, I suggest looking up on the, the SIO site for that unified demo project. You can download that. You can kind of run that. You can run it in a simulator. Uh, there is some kind of checks that you have to do to, to be able to simulate a unified demo, but they're offering free demos for you to kind of play around with on the support site. So reach out to myself or check out the the Siemens support site we will help kind of drive you there WinCC unified community Siemens has WinCC unified webinars that they are putting on um, that you can watch and it will kind of walk through the entry level and then they'll keep kind of adding on more and more videos to add in different uh, tasks that, that you're going to do in WinCC Unified. Um, once again, these videos are free. You can uh, go on the site. So it's Siemens.com, WinCC slash Unified slash System. You can sign up. Uh, this, is, this came out last year. I've watched most of these. They are really good uh, videos that kind of just give you an idea of how to set up the, uh, the panels. We offer starter kits. So in the starter kit, you get a copy of the WinCC Unified Comfort license or software with the license. You get the panel, you get a uh, license for the Somatic Edge memory, uh, memory card, film, cable. Um, this is a really good deal for this panel. I believe it's a seven inch, uh, the, yes, it's the M MTP seven inch. Um, but this is a, a nice little starter kit if you wanted to get one to uh, test out. And we also have the Somatic IPCs as well as the Unified uh, PC license. If you buy a IPC, you can have Unified already installed on there. And then there are discounts that you know, if you're buying the PC, you get the Unified PC license at a discount. Right. There's additional training that's going to be coming. So if you have not been to the C-Train site, uh, it's Siemens.com slash C-Train. That is the Siemens training site that you would either tech, take, uh, you know, purchase a, a training package through, through Wesco, and you would then take classes either on site in Georgia or around the country, depending on what is being offered. There are syllabuses there that allow you to kind of see what is being offered and how to uh, sign up for those. Reach out to us. Once again, this is for 2020 uh, slide, but obviously 2021, they are going to be starting opening more of that. Uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, Georgia is not overrun by any additional uh, variants. Promotion packages. So WinCC Unified uh, PCs. These are additional run tags that you can order. 
And this is the plant intelligence option that has some have deeper insight that we can look at. That's the calendar, the KPIs, add-ons. Accessories, panels, part numbers. Once again, we'll get this, we'll have updated part numbers if you need something. And then here's your sizes. So seven, 10, 12, 15.5, 18.5, And we also offer starter kits and actually all the sizes. All right. Let me sharing there. So I'll just leave it up. All right. Uh, questions so far? I know we went through that. Once again, that was a, a I don't want to kill you with PowerPoint, but just wanted again to give you a, a look of what it looks like. Any questions so far? What are the costs of starter kits? Like, is there a page that tells us that? Um, Cost of a starter kit, that is a good question. I would say for a seven inch, it's probably gonna be, I'm gonna say less than a grand or maybe around a thousand bucks for for the starter kit, maybe 1200. Um, but you know, you're getting the panel, the license itself, which is probably a couple hundred, you know, the the, the whole kind of, configuration there's definitely a decent savings uh that you're going to get and then it would depend on which size so like i said seven all the way up to the 22 inch um but uh, if you if you want a list we can definitely get a quote together for the starter kits okay all right so let me jump over to portal All right, so you guys can now see my portal screen. All right, so I have a 10 inch uh, unified panel. So I'm gonna add in a standard comfort panel just for reference. All right, and we'll look at these here. Uh, so in a standard comfort panel, a lot of you guys have probably seen this before. Um, you have your main screen, you have your traditional kind of tags and, and icons. So, you know, if I want to put a, a dial over here, you know, here's the dial, here's a, a slider, buttons, basic setup. Uh, but this is what we've been using kind of traditional really you know typically it's just a standard background and then you can add in your additional features here uh, tags screens all this is kind of tied into the normal setup um, which is still you know comfort panels aren't going away so if you have a comfort panel uh, it's not they're not going you know obsolete they're currently right now is not a uh there's not a conversion from the comfort panel into a unified comfort. Uh, it is technically a rebuild. Uh, they are working on an add-in kind of conversion with V17. Uh, I believe they did add that to V17, but it is not a, a drag and drop 100% kind of change. There's going to be some tweaking. So unified is really our, our target is going to be the new customer that is uh, adding or creating an HMI for the first time. We kind of want to start them on unified to actually have all those tools, uh, you know, from the start, right? Uh, but you can kind of see there's different settings in here, uh, different setups. So if I wanted to come in here, you'll have different setups in the uh, HMI itself. And so there's the different values. 
Uh, now shift over to the Unified Comfort. You know, very similar, right? Now in this case, you can see I, I did lose the graphic of the HMI because this is going to be scalable. So you have your kind of main uh, window, but this allows it to kind of be more design and more of a web page design. So you just have a kind of a, a target space and then that can go from any size screen. Uh, but you are going to see, you know, you have a lot more um, kind of just better graphics, uh, newer you know, compared to the older style. And then you have different settings if you wanted to make changes. So on here, I have a dial. Uh, I can make that 360 degrees. I can make it 180 degrees. I can change my scaling. Uh, all this is built here. And then from there, if I wanted to tie a tag to this, I can do a tag or I can actually write a script. And this is where you're gonna put in your scripting. So I can actually tie the process value to a script. And there's gonna be some scripting that is gonna be available that is kind of required right now, but uh, for, for WinCC Unify, but if you're not familiar with some of the scripting, there are pre-canned uh, code to do some of that, those add-on features. And then this is where you would normally go out and if you wanted to use the uh, template suite, you can design your own HMI and kind of look at different screens that would be available. And let me see if I can get that pulled up. I had some issues earlier. Let's see if I can get that connected one second. Sorry, my uh, portal had closed the other instance of the demo. So here is the no, that's not the demo I wanted. My apologies, folks. If I didn't pick the, the wrong uh, project, it, it wouldn't give you that full experience of what we have to do, right? All right, so, so some of these are already built in. As you can kind of see, they've created different layers. They're just add-ons that can be put on here. And this is the, the different setups that you can add in. A lot of customizability for this, as well as there's additional uh, libraries that can be added in. Okay. So I'm gonna stop sharing that. And I'm going to jump over to my phone real quick. Let's go ahead and share. set up here okay so this is a demo that we have this is our cc unified demo this is something that we can bring out you know sit on sit on the desk and let you guys kind of look at and play around with it let me go ahead and get this framed up here all right now this is the unified comfort panel this is actually the 
the operating system that is actually inside of the panel, right? So if any of you have gotten into some of the older Siemens panels, I say older, just the, you know, any basic panels or comfort panels, you will have noticed that those are a Windows CE based. Uh, and anytime you have to go in there and kind of do different settings, uh, it, it can be uh, not as easy to navigate. And they have done a fantastic job of changing that here with the new unified panel. So this is your kind of start screen uh, in the operating system. From there, I can navigate into my properties. I can look at my panel information. Uh, I can see which version. I can see what firmware I'm running. I can screen. I double tap the start runtime button. I can do screensavers. I can update the operating system. You can do automatic runtime starts. This is your network setting. So if you need to configure a uh, panel, so this is where you're going to put in your Profinet name and the uh, partner or the IP address. Okay. User management control panel access. So you can actually put in passwords for the panel so the uh, operators can't get into the system. You can set up your certificates and then the user management. Uh, Siemens has added a whole new user management control. Uh, it's the, called the Siemens UMC, and that is built into TI Portal, and it is a deep dive into security and, and access control. And I know um, Piyush and John, you guys are both in uh, you know, pharma, and there's lots of access control. So there's some additional features that may kind of fall into your guys' lap in the future. Hardware interfaces, I can actually see uh, what is going to be connected up to which port, and I can turn off USB access. Maybe you don't want the option that someone could uh, make a backup of your HMI or make any changes. You can actually deactivate these USB ports, and then you have the data memory slot in the back, date and time. This is our backup. This is our uh, kind of service and commissioning. So if you wanted to make a backup copy of this HMI, you do that here. You can do automatic backups. You can restore a lot of features that are built in here. And then we have our apps. So Somatic Edge is our kind of IoT uh, platform that Siemens is creating for those apps. Then you also have the document viewer, file browser, media player all different setups here. And then from there, I can actually come down to the bottom and run the actual runtime. This is, that's kind of our you know, enter, run, enter runtime or exit runtime. As you can see here, this is a pre-built screen that I have. So let's go back to main screen. So this is a program that we have kind of running and you can definitely see this looks a lot um, Cleaner. Now this is a seven inch screen, so there is still a lot of information that is running on this screen for being that small. Uh, but you do have, you know, good runtime data, right? You can see that the machine's doing uh, no errors in the machine. You can see tool information. I can see the positioning of the axes, right? How many runs have been going on? Whether the machine's running? All that is built in. And then from there, if I wanted to drill down. I just changed from one screen to the next, and I can then jump from settings here. So I can go into a configuration, I can home axes. There's information for servicing. So this is kind of helpful, and especially for some of you guys, for operators that may um, need some assistance or are new. You now seven inch screen, it might be a little small, but if you had a SOP that you guys had created for a machine, I can actually tie that right into the tool by selecting the PDF manual. It's gonna automatically boot up our PDF viewer software, right? So if you write your own little project for the operator, you could have a manual there built into the screen. 
I could do the same thing with this video, right? So now this is just going to show the little Siemens kind of teaser trailer. But um, I did this in a comfort panel at a automotive plant where if a operator did not hit their time after, I believe it was five consecutive uh, cycle counts for that station, uh, the video would automatically play. And we had to tweak it and do a lot of work for the comfort panel, uh, but it is built into the HMI here uh, to, to do that. But um, you can actually have kind of pre-built videos and load them into the panel uh, to do stuff like that. There's a trend view. And if any of you have ever used the trend uh, tool in the older panels, um, it is uh, it's, it's a great tool. Um, but it is a little difficult to configure, and they've done a really good job with Unified uh, to just give a better view of the trends instead of just a typical uh, kind of line line graph. All right from there, I've got my I can go to my messages. So this is your your PLC messaging, your alarms. You can clear alarms. You can shift different alarms. You can load stuff into the DBs. I can even do a simple view of just saying, I just need to just acknowledge an alarm. Different pop-ins or slide-in screens. Performance, we saw this same kind of bar and dial earlier on TI portal, but you can kind of see that there, you've got the uh, trend at the bottom. I've got my OEE data that's showing here, as well as just your production, you know, last three day productions. From there, I have settings. So security, I can turn the uh, network adapter. I can change that. I can lock it out. And then I could even, uh, you know, for here, I can actually set that. But if I wanted to, I could use a, uh, a login tool there to where if I wanted to trigger that, it would actually ask for a username and password. Same thing for the USB and the SD card. I can uh, eject it or I can lock those down. And here's one, screen brightness. In some cases, it may not be a big deal. Other cases, it might just be uh, you know, a little too bright. I can actually just do that right here on the screen. And I can make those, those settings right on the HMI. So again, control panels, you can jump right to that. Jump back, software versions, just gonna show me which version of software I'm running. All different setups here. Go. And from there, if I needed to override, I can put in a password and change from an operator to a maintenance manager or engineer, as well as there's a list of different parameters that I can change the settings. So. This is just trying to give you a kind of a graphical idea. So as you can see, the fact that we can do sliding up and down, lot cleaner, more information can be fit on a screen that is useful instead of jumping from screen to screen. Uh, you have that option to kind of pinch and slide and zoom. Uh, this is all built into that panel. It is 11.50. Um, I'll leave this kind of up right now, but um, questions, comments, concerns, what are your thoughts on WinCC Unified? Uh, so you said it's rather than using Windows CE, it's using Linux OS, correct? Correct. So there's there is a it's Linux based. Um, the OS is kind of locked down. So so the screen that you see here, this is a this is kind of a, a built-in screen that uh, Siemens is providing. This uh, app screen is the setup. Yeah. So th this screen you see here is the OS that's kind of running in the background. 
it wouldn't it's not a uh, it's not a, a linux system that you could i guess get access to it's all kind of locked down but, but it is fairly reliable um, i know we've all had our blue screen of windows so uh, i'm not mad that they uh, went to the linux <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I said I can give you. I'll give you guys uh, your uh, seven minutes back for the rest of the day. If you have anything else, um, please let me know. And like I said, this is something we can take out uh, and bring out to you. I will, if you're interested, I can get you guys quotes for a starter kit. Uh, I think it's a it's a great product to have and, and you know be able to put on the desk and and to kind of experiment with. Uh, the sky's the limit on some of this stuff. Yes, yeah, certainly this is a product that some end users would see benefits uh, in using, but for the most part, if you're a machine builder and uh, you're really trying to present your product well to your end customers, the, the look of these screens is really so much better than the comfort panels. Um, you're really not paying uh, much of a price premium, if really any price premium at all, um, in order to get into a WinCC unified panel. The other thing that I'll mention too, for those of you that are out there that uh, have been using WinCC Comfort or WinCC Advanced, um, when you get your V17 uh, upgrade, or when you see the new software listed, it actually is listed now as WinCC Unified instead of WinCC Comfort. Um, you can still program Comfort panels with it. You can still program basic panels with it, but it's it's a name change to reflect the fact that the software can now work with the unified panels in addition to comfort panels and basic panels. So if you get an upgrade, your uh, version 14, 15, 16 upgrade to version 17 is gonna be an upgrade from what we used to call WinCC Comfort or WinCC Advanced to now uh, WinCC Unified. So just be aware of that name change as well. Hey, thanks everybody. Justin, thanks. That was a, a really nice presentation. Sure appreciate it. Hope everybody will let us know if they have any questions out there. Yep. Thanks guys. Appreciate your time.